No my hearty my welcome and warm Pacific greetings. I'm Kate, and in our last two videos we talked about what long COVID is, the symptoms you might experience, and how long COVID is diagnosed. In this video, we'll kōrero about other conditions that can be related to long COVID. The conditions we will cover in detail here are breathing pattern disorder, which is an ongoing change in your normal breathing pattern, fibromyalgia, where you feel constant pain with sleep and cognitive challenges, histamine intolerance, where your body reacts to the histamine in food and other allergens, mast cell activation disorder, where your immune system overreacts to harmless things around you, multiple chemical sensitivity, when your body reacts to low levels of chemicals in your everyday environment. There are two other conditions, dysautonomia, and a form of this called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, or POTS. Due to them being key to the symptoms of long COVID, we talk about them in video two and have a separate video with treatment options on POTS in video four. Now let's look at some conditions that are related to long COVID. Most of us don't think about our breathing. It's just something we do to get oxygen into our system. Breathing is so important because it actually controls a lot of your body's natural responses. Those sort of automatic functions of the body that we don't think about. So your breathing controls things that happen in your brain by sensing or changing chemicals that are released or moved around. And it's how your body reacts to different triggers. It can change things like your heart rate and it can make people feel really unwell, even though it is just breathing a little bit faster than normal. Breathing, um, inappropriately or improperly can definitely lead to other symptoms such as brain fog or fatigue, especially because if you think that you're breathing faster than normal for the whole day, you're using a lot of energy in excess to what your actual body requires at that time. But also it can put you into a state of feeling quite anxious, even if you don't think that you're anxious or rationally you can't think of any reason to be anxious but your body puts you into that sort of state of fight or flight despite the fact that there's no triggers around or or no real threat around. It's important to know that many people have breathing pattern disorders after having COVID-19, often becoming breathless with certain activities until the body builds up strength again. Normally this will improve after a few minutes rest and get better over time. If you're experiencing prolonged breathlessness, try the following positions. First, lie flat on your stomach, or lie flat on your side with your upper body propped up on pillows. Or you can sit in a chair, leaning forward with your head and neck resting on the pillow, or your arms on the table in front of you. Feeling out of breath can make you feel worried or anxious so it's best to try and stay calm. Taking slow belly breaths and focusing on your breath out will help you with any anxiety you may experience. On the other hand, breathing difficulties after having COVID-19 could also be due to the way in which you are breathing, a breathing pattern disorder. Your breathing is designed to respond to the activity you are doing or the environment you are in and returns to a normal, calm breathing rhythm after the activity, trigger, or stressor has passed. Sometimes, your breathing gets stuck in an elevated state, preparing you for action, and this can lead to a breathing pattern disorder. So what is a breathing pattern disorder, and what can you do about it? Breathing pattern disorder, or breathing dysfunction, is when there's an ongoing change in your normal breathing rhythm. But a breathing pattern disorder or a breathing pattern dysfunction essentially means that you're breathing within excess of what your body is trying to do at that time. In breathing pattern dysfunction, your body overbreathes um, despite the environment that you're in. So you may be sitting calmly, but breathing as if you're exercising. Sometimes it happens um, simply from the amount of mask wearing that people have been doing and that makes some people feel short of breath which makes you breathe a bit faster and then your body naturally adopts that pattern and keeps breathing that way even when whatever trigger has gone. 
The other thing could be anxiety, which often leads to you breathing a little bit quicker. And again, your body forgets to kind of switch off that fight or flight response, even when there isn't that sort of trigger around. Breathing pattern disorder can worsen some of your long COVID symptoms, as well as using more energy. Common symptoms experienced with breathing pattern disorder include lightheadedness, chest pain or tightness, and feelings of needing more air. What I found with that over time is the reason for the chest pain, particularly at the top, was because I was continually shallow breathing and gasping for air all the time and the muscles were really weak uh, through there. And so by going down and diaphragm breathing, I was able to sort of get that carbon dioxide, oxygen flow um, more settled. Some of the ways in which breathing pattern disorder might look or feel are breathing through your mouth, breathing too fast, holding or stacking your breath, which means breathing in without breathing out properly, taking breaths that are too big, sighing or yawning more often, using your chest muscles rather than your diaphragm, which is the main breathing muscle located under your ribs. Using breathing retraining exercises can help you to regulate some of your long COVID symptoms. Often if we treat a breathing pattern disorder, it can reduce a lot of the symptoms that are experienced through dysautonomia, such as things like postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome or POTS. And what we found is that by actually treating breathing pattern dysfunctions by trying to reduce that respiratory rate or the rate at which you're breathing, we can control some of the um, dysregulation in your autonomic nervous system. The chest pain, and respiratory issues. Uh, my respiratory specialist recommended going to a breathing physio. So I started going to, oh, I'm still going to breathing works um, and have an amazing physio that helps me through. And the big thing around the breathing is uh, she was explaining the um, your, your body's basic symptoms, uh, systems just go awry. And that was making what may have been a poor breathing um, habit just making it hugely worse. It's like learning a new ha um, new habit really. Over time I've got better at it and that's allowed me to get more mobile. The first step to improving your breathing is knowing what good breathing is and being aware of how you breathe. The nose is essential to breathing. It warms, filters, and moistens the air. The aim is to be able to inhale and exhale through your nose when you're at rest and relaxed. Another thing is when you are feeling quite calm is to actually look at your breathing and see whether you're breathing really low and slow. So when I say low, I'm talking about belly breathing or abdominal breathing, nice, calm, relaxed breathing. And you can do that by popping one hand on your chest and one hand on your tummy and just holding it there for a couple of minutes and seeing where you feel the rise and the fall. And if you feel that that's mostly in your chest, even though you're relaxed, it could be a sign that you have a breathing pattern dysfunction. You want your breath to be deep, lower in your chest so your belly moves when you're breathing rather than your chest or shoulders. This is not achieved by taking a big deep breath. Rather, smaller slow breaths into the lower chest belly area. A slow breathing rate of eight to 12 breaths per minute at rest. To slow your breathing down, the breath out, your exhale, needs to be longer than the breath in, your inhale. The exhale at rest is passive, quiet, not forced and this results in a slower flow of air going out of your lungs. Slower breathing can help lower your heart rate, make you feel more relaxed and calm the nervous system. 
If someone's just starting out, I think it's really important to make sure that the quality of the breaths that you're doing when you're trying to retrain your breathing pattern are of good quality. So instead of trying to do a hundred or a big chunk of 20 minutes of this good breathing, you may find that you can only do two or three before your body naturally reverts back to that other pattern. And you'll notice that if you have your hand on your chest and your belly. Often it's best to think about doing this as I said when you're calm and sometimes even lying on your back with your knees bent just to take away um, postural changes with that. Everyone will be different but start small with even just doing this for a couple of minutes in the day even if that's three or four um, good breaths and then having a break and then going back to it and eventually what you can do is start to progress that into different positions such as sitting or standing. Click on the link in the video description for some simple breathing exercises recommended by a cardiorespiratory physio who specialises in this area. The breathing things, issues, especially with um, the asthma thing, I mean, I, I never ever thought I'd be in that one of those places where I used to have to, well, will need a pump at any time. And um, I think it just became a panic thing after a little while. And then once I went through the respiratory physio, the idea was for me to learn how to do all the exercises so it would benefit me. What I've learned through going to a breathing physio is that I was breathing through my chest because I was trying to get, um, my heart was beating so fast and it's almost like you've run this really um, long race and you're really um, puffing almost really, really hard and it was all through my chest so there wasn't enough air um, and wasn't enough CO2 um, uh, whatever it is expelling or being retained and um, and because I had no oxygen in my brain and it was all just causing all this whole issue so then lying down resolves it but I had to learn to breathe properly with my breathing physio who's been absolutely amazing I can't recommend a breathing physio enough They've been incredible. If you experience any worsening symptoms, stop the exercise and contact your doctor or book an appointment with a trained cardiorespiratory physio who can assess you and assist you with exercises to suit your needs. You can find a physio in your area at physio.org.nz. Do you experience body pain with your long COVID? Many people with post-viral illnesses have body pain, and this can be due to a number of reasons. In some cases, some people can be diagnosed with fibromyalgia by looking at certain pain points on the body. This is a condition where you feel constant ongoing pain and stiffness in your muscles and joints, and is accompanied by fatigue and sleep problems. For more information on fibromyalgia, we have included a download sheet for you in the link with the video description. In video 10, we quoted all about pain in long COVID and developing a pain management plan. Now let's quote it all about sensitivities that relate to the last three conditions, histamine intolerance, mast cell activation disorder, and multiple chemical sensitivity. Have you found since having COVID-19, you are more sensitive to smells, some foods, or mold? Or do you have digestive problems, skin irritations such as hives, itching or rashes, or heart and lung symptoms such as wheezing, breathlessness, blood pressure, and heart rate changes? A change in the immune system of some people with long COVID has meant they've become more sensitive to things that they had no problems with beforehand. This can include some foods, alcohol, tobacco smoke, car exhaust fumes, perfume, insecticides, new carpet, weed sprays, chlorine, mould and more. These conditions can also contribute to long COVID symptoms like headaches, fatigue, brain fog and dizziness. It's important to note that while some doctors recognise these disorders, 
others don't recognise them. However, they will recognise the symptoms, so it's best to track the symptoms and discuss them with your doctor or health provider. Let's kōrero about histamine intolerance. You might be wondering how histamine is involved. Histamine is naturally produced in our body and found in some foods. It's a really important part of our immune response and is what causes the redness and inflammation around the site of an infection or an insect bite. Having some is essential, but having too much isn't good. It's about balance. With long COVID, it's possible the histamine balance in our bodies is disrupted, or the body may not break histamine down from food in the gut properly. Either way, histamine builds up and we get symptoms, like a bucket overflowing. Different people have different triggers for histamine. It could be foods, chemicals, smells, dust, and seasonal allergies like pollen and grasses that contribute to histamine imbalance. Often, a trial of antihistamine medication can help and help determine if your symptoms are histamine related. However, the best strategy for reducing these symptoms is identifying the triggers and avoiding them. A low histamine diet can help However, the diet is very restrictive, so it's best to speak with your doctor or nutritionist or dietitian for advice. In some cases, when a person has a histamine intolerance, it can develop into a chronic multi-system disorder called mast cell activation syndrome, or MCAS. Mast cells are a part of our immune system. They defend against intruders like viruses by releasing a variety of chemicals, including histamine. This is good and normal, but sometimes the mast cells don't settle down after the threat is over. With MCAS, the mast cells release their chemicals in response to harmless things in our normal environment, including some foods, chemicals, moulds, plants, and even stress. Multiple chemical sensitivity is a different form of immune dysfunction. This occurs when your body reacts to low levels of chemicals in your everyday environment, such as the ones we talked about before. Symptoms can be similar to histamine intolerance, but also include dizziness, nausea, chest pain, breathing problems, muscle pain or stiffness, confusion, trouble concentrating, memory problems and mood changes. There isn't much research on multiple chemical sensitivities yet, Others with this condition have found removing the toxin triggers from their home helpful. You could replace normal cleaning products and body care products with natural ones, without perfumes, and ensure you are not exposed to mould. If you would like to look into any of these conditions further, there is more information available to download. And we encourage you to seek medical advice if you are concerned about any of the symptoms. Long COVID and other post-viral illnesses can be complicated. Symptoms can vary from person to person and can be a sign of another related condition. Our biggest takeaway here is that if you're worried at all about other conditions, contact your doctor or health provider. In the upcoming videos, we'll call it all about a range of tools that can help you reduce your symptoms. And it's a combination of these that will make the difference for your whole order, your health. I know there's a lot of information to take in, so remember you can come back to these videos at any time and use the symptom tracking sheets and resources to help you. Nā mihi and thank you for watching. Please do get in touch if you have any questions and if you found this video helpful, please share it.